Watch this video to understand how spinal decompression could be the key to solving your L4, L5 disc herniation or L4, L5 disc bulge. In today's video, I'm going to explain how spinal decompression, non-surgical spinal decompression, could be the miracle that you've been looking for. Also, I'm going to explain how decompression helps relieve pain, why a disc bulge or disc herniation hurts so bad, how pressure on a nerve can cause pain, numbness, weakness, and I'm going to explain how decompression fits in an overall rehabilitation program and how 95% of you that are suffering with a bulge or herniation with or without leg pain can get that corrected, fixed, stabilized without surgery. And we have over a 95% success rate. Yes, surgery is necessary for a very small percent, maybe three to five, and most can be fixed without surgery. And then we're gonna also talk about some of the consequences of surgery. Just because you get surgery doesn't mean you'll never get another herniation or have what they call adjacent level spinal problems or adjacent level spinal disease. That means if they have to fuse an area, above or below is gonna work harder and you can get another herniation. So there's no guarantees with surgery. And surgery, while has benefits in select cases, there's obviously risk anytime you get uh, put under anesthesia, anytime you cut the skin, there's obviously risk and everybody would love to fix their back and leg pain their herniation, their bulge without surgery. I'm Dr. Gregory Kramer. I'm a Livonia chiropractor. I've been practicing for over 30 years. I've seen over a couple hundred thousand patient visits. I specialize in L4, L5 disc bulge or disc herniation and other chronic spinal degenerative problems. My three main forms of non-surgical treatment are corrective chiropractic. That means we first measure the spine with x-rays, we put you under stress, we have you bend to see what's sloppy and what's stuck. We, all, we then prescribe what we call an opposite posture or mirror image adjustment, mirror image exercise, and mirror image rehabilitative correction. In other words, we are molding the spine closer to normal. We then also use spinal decompression. Think of decompression almost like a pump. And we need to pump fluids in and out for that disc to heal. And then we finish with targeted, very specific, personalized corrective exercise for the core, for your posture, and to stabilize your spine. Now, very simple. If you like this information, do me a favor. Like and subscribe. If you think this information would help someone else, hey, share it to a friend. And, and at the very end, in the comments section, if you've subscribed, let me know. And if you let me know, I will personally reply to you. What happens? How does a disc get injured? Well, it's either one huge force or a lifetime of little injuries. Either way, let's say you've done something as a child and you had a small misalignment. Then you get older, you work hard, you play sports, a couple car accidents, you go snowmobiling, you land on your butt whatever, but a lifetime of trauma, your spine is out of alignment. This is an example of a severe misaligned spine. This is when this first person first came in. Blue line is normal. This is looking at an x-ray from front to back. So we can see the yellow line represents this person's alignment, way out of alignment. Now, when the vertebrae that are sit on top of the disc, when they're out of alignment, your weight is shifted, so we have abnormal load. Over time, that abnormal pressure causes that disc to bulge, slowly stretches it. Eventually, a bulge, an, add a trauma to a bulge, eventually get a herniation, all right? Now, a herniation, it can be a small one, a slight tear where you hurt your back, you're bent over, and then in a couple days, it calms down. Let me show you what a herniation looks like, okay? So, this is a picture of the spine, a disc. This is the nerve root. You have nerves that come out of these holes, these right here. This is a neural canal. This is the spinal cord that connects the brain to the body. Now, look at the red. The red indicates there's a tear, what we call an annular tear. The outer disc is annular fibers. The inner disc is called a nucleus. Nucleus has a high water content, particularly when you're young. Now watch this here, the red mark. This is what a bulge turning into a herniation. Can you see that herniation? And then we decompress this disc, okay? 
Let's do it again. This bulge and then herniation, and that can hit the nerve. Horrible butt leg pain. And then what do we want to do to a bulge or herniation? We want to decompress. One more time. Bulge or herniation. This can be horrible pain. Unrelenting pressure. Decompress. This is what spinal key decompression does to you. Now, that pain can be unbelievable. It's pressure. Now, the reason when you injure the nucleus, when the inner part of the disc breaks through these little fibers and it gets to the outside, the body says, what's up? It treats it like a foreign invader. So it sends a tremendous amount of white blood cells. That's what creates the inflammation. Inflammation creates tremendous pressure, horrific pain. You can't sit, you can't stand, you can't sleep. I've been there. In fact, I'm just like you. In fact, probably worse than most of you because I injured my L4 disc so bad I had to be knocked unconscious to get into an MRI. Most of you aren't like that. In fact, over 30 years, a couple hundred thousand patients, I haven't seen anybody that had to be knocked unconscious just to get an MRI. So if there's hope for me, and I'm about a year later, and I'm, in fact, I did some sparring yesterday, lifted weights, uh, skiing, I think there's hope for most of you to avoid spinal surgery. So decompression is usually the, the beginning. Once we clear you and make sure you're not an emergency uh, surgical candidate, and that's rare that you're emergency surgery. 95% of most people have some time with conservative care. Conservative care means non-drug, non-surgical intervention. So non-surgical decompression is usually the first step. It feels good. People ask, what does it feel like? Most people fall asleep. I loved it, all right? Especially when you're in agony. Listen, I've been getting spinal adjustments. I'm 59 oh, since I was 16. I have to admit though, when I was in agony, I was a little nervous to get an adjustment. Let me tell you this, if you're nervous about treatment, you never have to be nervous about decompression. You're gonna be asleep. So unless you're afraid to go to sleep, you're gonna do fine. It takes pressure off. And you'll either lie face down or face up, whatever's the most comfortable for you, or sometimes even on your side, whatever's the most comfortable position. So spinal decompression feels good. It pumps that fluid and we must get fluid into the disc. And the reason is, is that we wanna get the inflammation out and get the healthy nutrition in. We wanna get blood and all the healing nutrients inside the disc. And that's why it takes away pressure and it also creates a healing environment. So decompression is usually the first step. Now, most people will start to feel better usually within one to four weeks. Now remember, complete healing. You know, remember, are you 70 years old or 30 years old? There's a big difference. But complete healing for a disc is every bit anywhere from three months to 24 months. However, the majority of the patients will start to see improvement within one to four weeks. All right? That means you have less pain. I didn't say cured, but you'll have less pain, beta range of motion, and you'll start to be able to do more. You'll start to be able to walk and lift and bend and things like that. So again, spinal decompression feels great. The second part of the care is we got to structurally align the spine. So this is an example, severe alignment. This is a patient in 30 days. As you can see, the blue line is getting closer to the yellow line. All right, the blue line is perfect. And this is the patient three months later, near perfect, lifting weights, doing all the things they want to do. So again, we have to make a structural change to get long-term. It's pretty easy to get short-term pain relief. The question is, how are you doing long term? So you, there's more to care than just getting out of pain. In fact, that's where the real care begins. Decompression starts the process by pumping the disc, getting that inflammation out of there, creating an environment for that disc to heal. Then we look at structural alignment, and then we look at stabilization. And then we look at a variety of, a variety of targeted, specific, stabilizing exercises. We might have to work on your posture. We might need to improve your curve. We might need core stability. We might need to work on your hip mobility because if your hips don't work, you stress your spine. There's a host of things that we need to do to see to make a long-term correction. We want you out of pain as fast as possible, make a spinal correction, and then stabilize it so you can go back to what you want to do. Now, how do you know if you're a candidate? It's really simple. Have you had an MRI that says that you 
have a herniation or a bulge? Probably a step. Number two, do you have pain or weakness in your arms or legs? Number three, do you have pain going from sitting to standing? Yeah, a lot of people can have a negative MRI because they have a small disc problem, a small disc bulge or a small disc. And when they go from sitting to standing, they get a catch. That's a disc problem. And then as they start to walk a few steps, it loosens up. When you start to bend or move, do you have pain in the first one-third range of motion? That usually indicates a disc. And then very simple, uh, it's a simple test. In fact, as we slide down this slide, um, you will see that as we pull gently on the legs, real simple, high tech folks, high tech here. It's a simple test. If that feels good to you and all those other signs feel good, you're probably a candidate. So again, if you want to get help and you've tried a variety of things and if nothing's working, spinal decompression should be considered before shots and surgery. Okay, I certainly did it and I would recommend for you. Now I want to hear from you. What have you done? Have you had spinal decompression? Have you had physical therapy? Have you tried exercise? What type of exercise have you done? Have you had surgery? Did you have a minor surgery? Or did you have a fusion? How many times have you had surgery? Have you had more than two or three? Let me know. Have you had chiropractic? Well, define chiropractic. Pain relief only, adjustments only, or did you go to a certified corrective care chiropractor where they actually measure your spine, do motion x-rays, look at your spine. If you have a large displacement, then you would be put on a program of adjustments, exercise, traction, and then remeasure. Did you have home care? Did you have corrective chiropractic and decompression? Did you have non-surgical decompression face up? Did you lie face down? Did you, were you on your side? What were your results? I want to know from you. So please let me know. Suffering from an L4, L5 disc bulge or herniation and nothing seems to be working, find a chiropractor near you that's certified in corrective care and does spinal decompression. It could be the miracle you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for information on how to get well and stay well, just again, like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget, if you think other uh, friends of yours or family would benefit from this, you know, share this with them. And if you can do me a favor, if you let me know in the comments section that you subscribed, I will personally respond to you. If you want more information, other exercises that you think would be helpful, uh, please go to my channel. I think you will like these exercises here.